Okay, just as a show of hands, how many of you guys here got six hours of sleep? Six hours. Right. one, two, five hours? This is always interesting. I can't have the last day yeah. Alright, four hours. Okay, not bad. You don't remember? Oh, that's not good. Three hours? Okay, two hours? One hour? All nighter? <laughs> okay, three to four hours. That's not too bad. Okay, so uh, I pray that you guys will be able to stay awake as we look into the last, um, the last message today. And I thank you so much for the reading in Psalm 24. I just absolutely love it. It reminds me of uh, everything that we talked about yesterday. Um, and again, I really want you guys to leave camp knowing that God is so much bigger than what fits in your pocket. Um, but if you'll turn with me back again to Genesis 1. And we're actually going to, I think that's only probably going to be looking at, and if there's any other verses that will be reflected up there. Is everything set to go as far as the... Yeah, there's the PowerPoint for it. Okay. I, I don't know how all this clicker is working, but let's see, three, two, one. Bingo, awesome, awesome, okay. So Genesis chapter one, verse 26 and 27, if you don't have your Bibles, please read along here. So God says, okay, and this is again, we're going back to the creation story, right? Um, I, the Father there is looking at the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's why it says, let us make man in our image. You guys see the uh, plural there? Right? So it says, let us make man in our image. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Um, those aside from my church, anyone know the importance of repetition? Do you guys see the repetition in here? Does anyone know what it, the significance of it in the scriptural... Right? Besides from my youth. Right, it's to emphasize it because the writer of Genesis did not have Microsoft Word, right? And he did not have the option to control B, bold, or italicize or underline. So in order to emphasize something, writing big wouldn't really matter because once it's copied, like that kind of loses it because what if that person has small handwriting? So what they would do is they would repeat it. So um, yes, this is a poetic, and yes, I understand that Genesis was written as a very poetic thing instead of a scientific, this is the order in which God created it. But he says, let us make man in our image. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Okay? How many of you guys are familiar with the Sistine Chapel? Not 16, the number 16, but, this, but the Sistine Chapel. Oh, boy. <laughs> Okay, right, it's that great work by... Thank you. All right, so it's, it's this incredible work by Michelangelo. I wish I had a good quality picture of it, but I don't, and so I just decided not to put one up because it's all pixels and that annoys me. Um, but basically what this dude did was he just painted this whole entire ceiling, and it's not just like stick figures, it's like some of the most majestic, and I'm sure if you've seen, if, I, if you guys saw some of it, you guys would be like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's a very, very famous painting, go look it up. But check this out, it's in this old school, like cathedral sort of thing. And as they burn candles and incense, all that smoke rises up to the ceiling, and all that wax rises up to the ceiling. And then after a while, you start to realize that a lot of the color of the painting has faded. And if you go up to it, if you, not that it knows that I'm going to let you, but if you go up to it, if you swipe your finger across, they say that there's so much gunk that's built up from all the burning the incense. Uh, also, consider hair and dust bunnies and dandruff and dust and everything else just gets stuck to this waxy ceiling thing and it's, it's pretty gross, okay? But do you think that um, the people who take care of the, the chapel today, do you think that they tore the whole entire place down because it's dirty and gross and grimy? Do you think they tear down the whole entire place and Michelangelo's work just because it's faded? No, they restore it. And so there are crews that they hire specifically just to restore this whole entire masterpiece. And these guys aren't just like people that you hire off the street and be like, hey, uh, could you paint that brown? It's, it's these artists who have spent their whole entire life dedicated to Michelangelo's work just so that they could finish repainting this. And I, don't, I forgot how uh, long it took, but um, every, every so often, periodically, they have to go and they have to restore it. Not, 
in every detail, but they have to clean all that stuff off and they have to repaint it. And this is why, is that it's because it's a masterpiece. And I want you guys to look at this today, that God created us in His image. That when we sin, God doesn't destroy us. He could, and those who don't accept Him will be. Right? Those who don't let Him restore you will be destroyed. And that's what Scripture clearly preaches on that. Okay, but those who are his children, he looks at you and he looks at me and says, you know what, you were created in my image. I spent time on you. Look through the Psalms and look at through all the verses where David writes how, you know, you saw me and you formed me and you knit me in my mother's womb. It's not, and this is why I'm so against abortion, okay, it's not that it's just coincidence. But you guys are created with a purpose, with an agenda in mind. Psalm, the, the, the psalmist writes that all my days were ordained before me before I was ever born. And so God takes time and creates this human being, and here you guys are, right? And when you sin, instead of God destroying you, which you could, he restores you. And that's why we go back to John, which we talked about the first night, right? The Word became flesh. Remember the Creator God? For everything was created through Him, by Him, and for Him. Okay, We were created by that same God. And because that Creator, the artist, loves His masterpiece so much that He came in flesh to die for us and to restore us and to bring us back to Him. So our value then is rooted in Him. Right? And so, um, let me see here. All right, okay, so you think about this, right? And, and I was gonna bring this in, but it's kind of gross, and so I didn't want to do this. But I have two bear of boxers. Um, I don't think you guys would appreciate it, brought them in. They're clean, but I'm still not gonna do it. It'd just, just be awkward. Um, but one of them, they're both pretty much the same design, and they're both 100% cotton. They both kind of feel the same, but one is $3, another is about $27, okay? One is from Walmart, and the other one is from Banana Republic. I didn't buy it, my cousin gave it to me. Yeah, I don't spend that much money on boxers, okay? And honestly, you would not know unless you came up and like awkwardly flipped the back of my tag, which please don't do that, okay? And there's the only way is because you'll see this little Banana Republic written there, and that thing makes it $27. Okay, who gets to decide the price? Right, Banana Republic gets to decide how much they want to rip you off. Right? Um, but you think about the way that we're created. Okay? Who gets to set the value of, of us and how much we're worth? God. Right? Because there's no way that I can tell you how much you're worth. And here's the scary thing is that so many times, boys and girls, we look for our value in the opposite sex. Okay, we, we say that I am beautiful because he said I'm beautiful, and if he is, but today he had a bad day and he called me ugly, therefore I'm ugly. No. <laughs> okay? Or whichever, and you guys laugh now, and, but wait till that day comes and you're like, oh man, that hurts. Okay? But our value then is based in one another, and so like, and, and for you Asians, okay, your values, <laughs> Your value, ready, is calculated on a scale of 4.0. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you guys feel good about yourself when you get a 4.0? How many of you guys feel crummy about yourself when you get a 2.3? Oh. Hold up, hold up, it's bringing it back, it's bringing it back. Okay. And so our value then is it's calculated because of these people who, who looks at your grade and says, okay, this is how much you're worth. Boom. Okay, hold on, let's, let's back this up to Genesis. Who created us now? And we created whose image? So who sets the price value of us? Do you know what our price value is? It's, it's Jesus. It's God thinking, okay, I created this thing. Yeah, boy or girl, whichever. He says, okay, how much is this going to be worth? I did spend a lot of time in it. And I looked in the mirror and I created him or her in my own image. So this is the price value that I'm going to set for him or her. He takes Jesus' blood and stamps, boom. This person is worth all of me. And nothing short of me, but everything of me. Which is what we looked at in Colossians. That the, he is in the, um, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. 
that Jesus, we are worth Jesus, we are worth God. Are we gods? No. <laughs> Please don't get me wrong. We're not gods. We are not equivalent to God, but we are in his image, in his likeness. All right. 